Next is uh, the use cases for uh, mutating admission controller because uh, this is more better understood by the uh, examples. Let's take some examples where the mutating admission controllers can be helpful. Now, uh, mutating ad admission controllers will uh, often be uh, used for automating and enforcing the policies and the configurations. Like, suppose if you, um, uh, let's say you are uh, deploying uh, in the Kubernetes your application, you want to inject a sidecar. Normally, in what cases we are going to inject the sidecar? So, suppose uh, you want to gather the logs and put in uh, inside your centralized ELK cluster, right? In those conditions, we are going to inject the sidecar. Now, uh, uh, this admission controller, it can use some default values in the certain field to ensure that all your pods in a namespace have specific label and condition. So, um, even though we might not be uh, putting those values, then also this can actually uh, modify the policy. So, to have those labels and annotations so that automatically a sidecar will be created which can ship the logs from the pod to our centralized Elasticsearch cluster so that all the logs are there because pods can be terminated at any point in time. This reduces your configuration. You don't uh, no longer have to make sure that this configuration has been written. If someone uh, uh, forgets to add it, then uh, this kind of uh, mutating admission controller is automatically going to inject the sidecar. That is why how it becomes important. Now. Uh, uh, there are some default values. Now, what is this default values? Basically, mutating admission controller can set your default values for the field which are not specified, like we just discussed. And here, uh, the default, uh, it can automatically set the resource limit if not provided. Like, suppose, uh, suppose someone forgets to provide how much CPU, how much memory needs to be uh, created, right? They have not defined. So, how, how does Kubernetes basically supports this that how much memory, how much CPU should be allocated to the pod? In that case, uh, you can put some default value. If a user does not specify, then that default value will be picked up and applied. This is an example of a mutating admission controller because it's going to change your request so that the default values actually overrides that request and that much amount of CPU and memory is allocated. So this is how the default values work. Next is injecting sidecar containers. We already discussed about the injecting sidecar containers. We took the example of the Elasticsearch cluster. Uh, uh, so you no longer have to specifically put for the logging sidecar sidecar container in the configuration. Uh, uh, this mutating admission controllers can automatically add the labels and make sure that those labels and annotations are being followed for uh, pushing the logs from the pod onto the Elasticsearch cluster like that. Then uh, another example would be for the monitoring perspective. If you want to make sure that certain labels are there for the Prometheus to scrap the metrics of the pod, then again, this uh, uh, injection of the sidecar can be taken care by the mutating admission controller. This is again very useful in that case. Next is enforcing labels and annotations. Now, uh, controllers, uh, what, what do you mean by enforcing labels and uh, annotations? So this is we again already discussed that controllers can ensure that the uh, within a certain namespace will have the certain labels and annotation applied to it uh, for uh, identifying those spots for the monitoring and the security policies. What this means is if you are configuring in Prometheus, let's say I put the uh, uh, Prometheus that uh, any pod which is going to match the labels, okay, a certain label, let's say Prometheus underscore monitoring true, right? So then it Prometheus will scrape its metrics. This is the default policy enforcement. If, if you enforce this kind of policy, then Prometheus will automatically scrape the metrics for that pod, which could be useful in case you are facing some out of memory or those kind of issues. Then you no longer have to worry about injecting these variables. This is certain, a certain thing which is taken care by the mutating admission controller for you. And then it will automatically enforce such policy, which is very useful in case of the uh, monitoring, enforcing monitoring uh, across your environment. Next is volume and security configuration. Uh, now, the, this can enforce the volume mount configurations like secrets, apply security policies before the pod is created. What this means is that I can uh, configure the way that ha how my secret should be dealt with. Now, suppose I say that the secrets uh, should be taken from the secret and uh, then mounted as a volume and attached to my pod, right? This kind of policy I can write 
and then um, this admission controller is going to make sure that my secrets are always following this policy otherwise uh, you can enforce it if certain policies are not being followed by this way someone tries to pass it as an environment variable or suppose they try to uh, directly put these kind of secrets right directly call it then those kind of policies will be rejected it will make sure that this kind of enforcement level action can be done now always remember whenever we are talking about the admission controllers it can be the policies can either be enforcing in nature or audit in nature audit is more soft full softer way of applying the things in which it's going to just give you a warning saying that certain policy is not applied it's not uh, uh, you know conforming to your standards but it will not block it but if you enforce it then it should be compulsorily following your policy if it doesn't follow your policy it's going to block it that's the major difference next is dynamic configuration so mutating admission controllers can dynamically modify your configurations of the pod based on the certain conditions and policy now uh, this dynamic configurations are particularly gaining the uh, traction now because this uh, makes sure that the compliance across our Kubernetes cluster is followed it helps you in the dynamic uh, config mo dynamically modify your configuration without hard coding so certain policies and certain kind of conditions can be enforced we are going to look at this in more in the later videos where we are also going to do the practicals for the same these controllers are often used to streamline and standardize your deployments of the resources in the kubernetes cluster ensuring that your certain configurations are consist consistently applied so the major goal of this admission controllers is to make sure that the policies that you are catering to are always applied to your cluster and uh, by modifying the resource at the admission time mutating admission controller helps reduce the manual configuration like you no longer have to uh, put the sidecar injection right it, this can be automatically done by the mutating admission controller if you don't put cpu in memory again that can be automatically taken care by the mutating admission controller similarly labels can be enforced for monitoring so what this mutating admission controller is doing is it's taking away the pain of managing the configurations at so many places and making sure that those configurations are getting passed before you uh, see what you are uh, likely to see suppose i want to see the pod in my monitoring i no longer have to worry about that the certain uh, uh, configuration has been passed or not it since my mutating admission controller is taking care of it so this is more streamlining the way that i want to maintain my overall cluster rather than me taking care of all the configuration making sure that all the different uh, folks in the team are following the same configuration or not which is often hard to achieve right so it is reducing the uh, configuration on that side